Keep watching today's video if you want to learn how to create a more environmentally friendly mechanic instead of using floral foam. So welcome back to today's video. If you haven't been here before, my name is Sharon and today we're going to look at how we can use some decorative wire to create a framework to hold our flowers into place. So on my channel here on YouTube, you will see me use lots of different styles of mechanics and mechanics is the material that we use to hold our flowers into place. So the obvious would be floral foam that we've been using for many, many years. Then there is agro wool and more sustainably sourced options. You'll also have seen me use chicken wire or wire mesh that you can buy from a hardware store. But today I'm going to show you how you can create your own structure using some aluminium wire. Now this one is a decorative aluminium wire that was designed for floristry use and is often used to add decoration into floral designs. It was very, very popular in the 90s and the early 2000s and isn't used so much now for a decorative reason, but is being used to create a more sustainable option instead of using floral foam. So you can see I've got this shallow bowl. It's a beautiful shade of like a mossy green and it would suit floral foam. You could use wire mesh in there as well. But I wanted to show you a different style of mechanic that would work really well. I've got some soft stem flowers to use today and they're not great lovers of floral foam. They're very hard to insert into the fiber floral and the agro wool. And this style means that the holes within the wire itself are large enough to accommodate the stems of the spring flowers and isn't going to damage them. And really all I've done is rolled it and scrunched it up to give me a three-dimensional section of wire. You don't want to squash it tight otherwise you won't be able to get the stems in. And I've done this in two separate pieces. I've got my length of wire. This is florist aluminium wire. And I've just rolled it several times, bending it back and forth. It's quite pliable. It's easy on your hands. And I've made myself a three-dimensional sort of structure. And I've done two of those to fit inside my container. This is a great mechanic to use in see-through vases as well because it gives that decorative element. And I've basically created two of these looped, twirled pieces of wire and they sit really nicely on top of one another. You can push them down so that they're sitting more comfortably in the container. And I am going to use some of the clear tape over the top to hold it into place. This stops the wire mesh from sort of sliding around and moving around. But if you really want to avoid using any plastic single use material, then what I would suggest you do is to use more mesh in the container and almost wedge it in so that it doesn't move around. But for today, this is going to work really well. That can be placed over the top. I've gone from left to right and front to back and that will secure my wire in there. And then I'm gonna add just a small amount of water for today's video, in case I need to tip it forward for you to get a better view. Now my bowl is very shallow and it does have this almost semi-crescent appearance to it. So I think I'm going to copy that style and come up from one side to the other. It is a style that I do quite often on the YouTube channel and it is one that I find particularly attractive. And with the springtime flowers, they really do appreciate fresh clean water rather than the floral foam. So it's going to work quite well. I'm looking to see what pieces of material that I've got and which way they're shaped. That one hopefully will stay facing upwards so I've got a nice curve. But if I can't find enough material with the curved shapes to it, then I have to rely on the structure to hold my flowers into place. Now this one is blackthorn and you can forage for this locally at this time of the year. Be very careful because it does have a very sharp thorn on it, which is why it's called blackthorn. Now if you're not sure what the blackthorn is, 
then during the autumn months it would have the fruit on it called the slow berry and that's what we often add to gin to give us our slow gin. If you're out walking and you know exactly where those shrubs are then pop back this time of the year when it's the spring and it's going to have this beautiful white blossom. Now some of the material, this is a uh, willow, is naturally curved and all I'm doing at this stage is feeding it into that framework. It's not like floral foam where you can position them and they stay exactly where you put them. They will move around slightly and nestle and find their own place within the wire mesh. So for argument's sake, if I wanted to have this straight up in the center, I'd have to keep playing around with it until I found part of the structure that will hold it into place. And one of the reasons that I quite often make these crescent shapes is because the outside material rests quite nicely on the edge of the container. Now I'm going to start adding in some of the spring flowers and we're going to start with the Narcissus and this variety is paper white. It's a very strongly scented Narcissi. Can be a bit unpleasant and a bit overpowering but it's such a pretty flower and it's one of the earlier flowering daffodils so within a very short space of time these won't be available to us so I'm making the most of them while they're um, in season. Sometimes the paper white is the first flower to come just before Christmas if you're lucky enough to be in a warmer climate then the narcissus will be the first flower that we'll see. And I'm cutting the stem quite gently because it's a soft stem, it can damage quite easily and if you haven't used daffodils before then it is recommended that you don't mix them with other flowers because it does give off this sticky residue on the bottom that tends to clog up the stems of other flowers but it's so lovely I can't resist. So we've so almost we got this crescent shape starting to form and sometimes when I do this video I start in the centre and I work my way out but I have got fairly few long flower stems to use so I'm starting on the outside first but there's no set pattern, do whatever you feel comfortable with. Now one of my daffodils was damaged in the packaging so this will come more down towards the front and at the moment I'm working on this design so that you're looking at the front and I'm looking at the back. So as I progress I might need to move a few of those flowers around if I feel they're not in the right position. As well as the white narcissi and the blossom I do also have some white snapdragons. These came from a mixed spring bouquet so they're much shorter in length but they will work quite nicely to bring that white colour in through towards the middle. And it's quite a heavy flower so I'm going to try and get that more towards the centre. One of the beauties of course is that you can rearrange them, you can take them out and put them back in and I'm not too concerned if they slide around as I insert the stems, it's quite easy for me to reposition them. That one's going to sit nicely there and these two are going to exaggerate that crescent shape that I'm trying to create from one side to the other and then I've got one very small one. The only difficulty with some supermarket flowers is that sometimes they can be damaged in the packaging and this one has unfortunately snapped but it's going to work quite nicely if I just tuck it in underneath there. It's going to help bring some white colour in towards the back and start to create the depth in the arrangement as well. At the moment I've only done the two sides but it's important to bring weight from the front to the back. Now we can introduce some colour and look at these. Now these are coming or they may have been already in a tutorial but they are absolutely brilliant. It's a ranunculus, this is the pon pon variety and it's almost like a multi-layered petticoat. There's frill upon frill of gorgeous either orange or orange and green petals. Really quite attractive. And these are going to start working from the outside to introduce that lovely colour as well. Now the more times you use the wire structure or chicken wire, the more confident you will become. Initially it can be a bit daunting not having the flowers securely placed into the floral foam. But it's a really interesting way of arranging flowers. It's very therapeutic and very relaxing. I'll start towards the outside and then keep working towards the middle 
so that I'm bringing the, as much of the colour from this side over to the opposite side. Oh, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Now, ranunculus can be a bit temperamental. They are very soft stemmed. It's a good one to grow in the garden. Apparently, they're very easy, although I don't have a great deal of success with them. And if you're lucky enough to have a flower farm in the area that you live and it's springtime with you, then you might be able to buy them from a local grower. I think I'm going to pop this one more towards the front. And now it's time for me to turn it around to see how the design is coming together. Up until now, I've been working backwards. The last two remaining ranunculus can come more towards the front. It's a fabulous colour, very vibrant colour. And this big headed one, I'm going to use more towards the front. And I've got that lovely colour link and you don't have to have that in floral design. It just makes the design more symmetrical and helps your eye travel from one side of the arrangement to the other. From a previous arrangement that I did last week, I've got some small cut down tulips. The colour is going to work really well and they will slot quite nicely more towards the front. And tulips continue to grow after they've been cut from the main plant. So these are likely to grow up to another three inches. So even though they're short at the moment, there's a good chance that in a couple of days time, I might have to move them around and put them into a different position. Now I've also got some gorgeous yellow daffodils. You'll know these are one of my favorite. And of course, it's my national flower here in Wales. Because they're already short stemmed, I'm going to use them in the lower part of the arrangement to bring some of that yellow colour there towards the front. Now, if I haven't already mentioned, daffodils aren't a great flower to be mixed with other spring flowers because they do tend to clog up the stem. But when it's springtime, I think it's lovely to use what's in season. And if you're good gardeners, you might have lots of daffodils coming up in your garden. If you're not such a good gardener, you might have daffodils in your garden. And if you haven't got them in your garden, then they're easily accessible from florist shops or from the local supermarket. And by placing some lower down here at the back, I'm helping to bring your eye all the way through to the back so that you pick up on the colouring and it gives that arrangement that three-dimensional effect that's really very important. Now a flower that I don't think I've used on the YouTube channel until now is this lovely Viburnum opulus and if again springtime flower if you've got a garden this might be starting to come into flower soon and at the moment it's a very apple -y sort of green a beautiful shade of green but as the flower matures it turns white. So you might be more familiar of this plant in the garden as the snowball bush. And if I just hold it up, you'll see that the base stem here is very woody. I've cut it with the sharp scissors at an angle. They don't survive if you cut them on the green stem. It's too soft and too delicate. You need to keep them on this woody stem. And they really do benefit from having flower food. So if you've bought them from your local florist shop, then they're possibly going to have given you some flower food that is specifically made for the viburnum and for woody material. And it really does help it fully open and encourage the heads to keep going so that you get to see that lovely white colour. Now I'm bringing some, you're still looking at the back there, but I'm bringing some more of this through towards the front. I'm going to cascade it really nicely over the front of my container. I've got a fair few stems of these. This is a commercially available one and it's one that I've had here in the studio for classes. But it looks absolutely wonderful in floral designs. Slightly move this one because it's dragging on the table. Now from this position here, I've still got some of that golden wire visible. So I need to keep adding flowers in at the base to make sure it's covered. And you could do that with the addition of foliage, but I'm going to start by using some of the limonium. Now this is part of the status family. Now you might have already seen this in a previous design because I have quite a lot of it here in the studio at the moment and uh, I'm going to make use of it in these tutorials rather than it go to waste. 
and I'm going to start, it's already cut to a certain length so I'm going to use it towards the base. So this would be described as a filler flower, very much like gypsophilia or solidaster. So if you've got something with a similar texture, then it will work just as well to fill in any gaps and to hide any of the mesh there at the bottom. Now I don't think we can have a true spring arrangement without one of my favourites and that's the irises. We're going to bring that colour again from one side of the arrangement through to the other. Try and use the more open heads towards the base so we've got that nice even distribution of the size of the flowers. I'm going to cut a few small so that they're placed down low almost acting like a foliage to help cover that mesh and for home use if you're arranging for yourself at home then there's no need to worry too much about covering all of that mesh it just tends to make the arrangement a lot neater and have better presentation when you can't see your mechanics there down low right the last of my few beautiful irises color is absolutely wonderful and the shape on the iris is so different from any other types of flowers. Remember to make sure that your flower stems are right the way down the bottom so they're reaching the full water so we know that they're going to open and reach their full potential. One last iris over on the right hand side of the arrangement and then I'll swing it around for you to have a look at. Now I did say that I wasn't going to put any greenery and that is a little bit of a lie. I have got some small very wispy fern that I'm going to drape over the front but I don't have any heavy greenery that would come to the centre of the arrangement although anything like camellia, ivy, you might have hebe in the garden would work quite well there towards the middle. But at the moment I've got that lovely boat shaped arrangement that I do tend to favour when I'm making these styles of arrangements and sometimes the shape of the arrangement is very much influenced by the shape of my container and because I've got a little bit of the viburnum draping over the front of the container I'm going to now add in some of this very soft fern this is one of the asparagus this is um, sprengeri and this is going to add in an interesting sort of texture there at the front and it's going to drape really nicely over the front of my container so those little viburnums that are at the front don't look quite so out of place and they've now got a bit of greenery alongside them so this is how the arrangement is so far what i really would like is some shorter pieces of the blossom just to bring some of the white color in there towards the front and i think i'm going to be pretty much finished with this style of arranging I don't want to create that too heavy structured look it needs to be quite simplistic very vintage in its appearance and I think that that mesh structure inside is held up really well the flowers are secure nothing is moving around you'll find a couple more bits of the white blossom and the catkins and then I'll be almost finished now I am very grateful that every week I get the chance to come and demonstrate a floral design like this for you and that you keep coming back and watching if you have any questions or any comments then please put them in the box below share with your friends and family so everybody gets Gets the chance to watch a lovely video tutorial and I will try and find a link to the aluminium wire so that if you want to create a structure like this you'll be able to purchase them. I know that there's something very similar in garden centres that you use to support plants during the summer. So thank you as ever for watching. I look forward to seeing you again very soon with a new tutorial and goodbye for now. <music>